Hi everybody, hi and welcome. Thanks for joining us for the webinar today. I am just getting us live on Facebook and we will get started properly. Yeah. I've got something going on. This webinar is now streaming live. Oh, I've got a little note saying, sorry, we're having trouble with playing this video. I'm hoping that we are live. I've had a couple of glitches this week. They have completely yeah. changed Facebook today. I don't know if everyone's seen as well. So it's all new. I think we're live. Yeah, here we go, live. Fabulous. So thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar, which is how to manage your diary, reception, phone calls and client welcome on reopening. Um, I'm Eve Oxbury, I'm Head of Editorial at Professional Beauty Group. Um, and today I'm joined by Valerie Delforge. Hi Valerie. Hello, thank you so much for having me again. It's really a pleasure to, uh, to be sharing a few uh, uh, tips and techniques on what to do with reception. Fabulous. Well, thanks for coming back. And I think most people probably know, but Valerie is a salon and spa business coach. And she runs courses on all sorts of topics like um, reception, but also retail, leadership, membership models, all sorts of things. So yeah, quite broad knowledge. Yes. Um, so yeah, before Valerie gets started, if you've got any questions as we go along, as always, if you're watching on Zoom, if you type them in the Q&A box at the bottom, then we'll get to them. And if you're watching on Facebook, just type them in the comments section. Um, we'd love this to be really interactive. So any comments, any questions, just let us know and we'll definitely get on to those. But yeah, Absolutely. Valerie, we will We love questions. <laughs> we love questions. So yeah, whenever you're ready, if you want to start. Okay, let's do the sharing screen. Here we go. It's always that moment of is this working or not? So hopefully we should have some thumbs up. Uh, should I put the chat or you're going to do the chat? Um, I will keep an eye on the chat and we'll, yeah, we'll go to that at the end. So keep um, an eye on the mute chat, myself yeah. now. <laughs> so be Fabulous. So uh, I'm going to kind of uh, look at the timing because I know last time I was a little bit, uh, a little bit long into uh, chatting away. So I've been told in the uh, office and also by Eve, like, make sure it's not too long. We've got time for connection. So please do ask any question. Uh, especially uh, on reception. So for those who don't know me, uh, I'm Valerie Delforge and I have been in the industry for 30, 30 years. Um, and I look around the Delforge 5. So basically I focus on the Delforge 5, like uh, Eve was mentioning. I'm, uh, I'm very much uh, uh, focusing on what I believe is going to change your business, is going to really grow your business. So I'm looking at the budget, the leadership, the reception is such an important part. And that's what we're going to discover today, the marketing and the retail. They're the, what we call the Delphos 5. And alongside that, you have modules, you have express modules, you've got downloadables and everything else that I can share with you in order to grow. Now, why reception? Why are we focusing so much on reception and why is it one of my five? You know, it's like five a day, isn't it? Um, the reception for me is the heart of the customer journey. You know, it's before the customer comes to the salon, they're going to deal with reception at one point, perhaps, uh, because they might have phoned or they might have uh, uh, an appointment that they book online. So when the customer enters the spa in the salon, the reception deals with them as well. Before for the customer's treatment, obviously the reception might, depends on your customer journey, but might be dealing with the client as well. And after the customer's treatment, when the customer leaves, but also when the customer is at home, how do we connect with that customer? How do we make sure that the customer is uh, constantly engaged with what you're doing? And reception takes a huge part of this because they can help you as an owner, as a salon uh, manager to really get all of this coordination uh, uh, happening. So to me, the reception is that wow factor. They come in, they, they, you come into the spa or the salon and they're like, wow, this is already, I feel really good. Already, I feel like I'm going to be taken care of. They're like giving you the little cherry on the top, in particular at the end of the, tree, at the, end of the journey. They really make you feel, oh, that was simply amazing and I want, to, I want to come back. It's not just a treatment anymore that we want. In, if any case, forever, we, we want more than that. When we come to your salon, to your spa, to where you are, even if you don't have a receptionist, you making that first 
impression by the client entering the spa or the salon or and the last impression when they leave so not only the treatment needs to be good but it's the entirety of the customer journey that's going to leave the customer feeling like this amazing memorable experience that was incredible that's what that was wow so what can we do to make that customer journey unforgettable those little touches that you might have and you might add and i think in particular lately with the the whole situation of opening up again i think we talk a lot about ppe we talk a lot about you know we must make sure everything is clean yes absolutely we've got to raise those standards however let's really link it to the customer journey what is the customer going to feel the minute they're coming back into your spa and your salon and how can we make them feel wow with all the skills and everything else that's going to happen within the salon we've got to make sure that we really really analyze that customer journey to keep that journey memorable and forgettable and we want to come back and the word nurturing has been coming into my mind since last week. I feel like I want to nurture the customer's expectation, just like I want to nurture the team. It's all about making sure that everybody knows that we are going to meet their expectations no matter what. You know, we're going to reassure with clear procedures and that reception does that. They have those procedures and they follow them. They're, a lot, they're very regimented in the way they can create that amazing customer journey journey you know nurturing that customer journey is that word again because i do feel that in a lot of the talks that we're having we're kind of not talking about that customer journey and that nurturing how can we make it still feel special if we can't have any hot hot drink and we can only have water what can we do to still make it feel special and to make it feel that the customer feels well so what is a winning reception? A winning reception makes you feel like it's a home-to-home -home environment. And when we think of that and we think of all the PPE and everything we're going to have to do, how are we going to make it work from a home-to-home -home environment? So your receptionist needs to feel very relaxed in her own environment because otherwise it will be that barrier already and we haven't even started uh, the journey with you. You know, they need to be efficient, organized, they need to have clear procedures, really a smooth customer journey we focus on each customers no matter what and I think we do a lot of mystery shops in the best of time when we can and sometimes we stand at reception there's someone that's being served and we're not really acknowledged and this is a skill that the receptionists really need to to adapt you know when we have the client coming through doesn't matter how busy that acknowledgement that looking in the eyes and saying thank you very much for, for waiting i'll be with you in a moment so all of this kind of acknowledgement is very very important now remember when you are going to open the door you can't have anyone at reception it's really really important that you are you don't have anyone waiting they don't come with anyone the client comes in purely for an appointment but it's still a journey it's still you still have to manage that so i have a client i thought that was really clever who's going to have the day before the opening when we have the date she's going to do a customer journey with her team so therefore they will do treatment on each other's and the receptionist will also be part of that customer journey i thought that was very clever to make sure that we know what to do and we know what to expect you know there needs to be uh, um, a, a powerful marketing at reception so be careful not to have any testers at the moment i would throw away all my testers but i'd have some nice a4 print of what you're talking about perhaps your product of the month or perhaps your treatment of the month that you might might want to advert adv advertise or perhaps even you know simply an information on on, uh, on something that you're doing just just something kind of more about the the treatment or the product rather than you know only covid uh, uh related then we're going to have you know for me they're the service team coordination when you have a winning reception they help the service team so they help the hairdressers to get um, to get to grace with what's going on. They help the therapist to perhaps uh, go and help them with the cleaning. So all of this needs to be really analyzed before you're opening the doors again. But a receptionist will increase opportunities and will read buying signals. So to me, so important that we have training up on that and we'll brush up on this in a minute. Now, a strong receptionist is going to work on the pressure. She's going to smile regardless of what's going on, even with the visors. She's 
it's going to appease the client's demands. We're going to make sure the client feeling really relaxed and feeling really good by, by the time they're coming to us. Now, I always used to say to my reception team, I don't want you to deal with negativity and really hard clients because we know at reception, in particular, with when we open the doors, you might have some high rate clients, you might have some clients that are difficult. So maybe you definitely need to have a procedure on perhaps what to do with customer complaints. And what I used to get with, obviously we had the managers for it, but I used to say to reception is, just smile, just say, of course, madam, let me find out for you and get a manager. I didn't want them to deal with the negativities because they've got plenty to deal with. So look at your structure and look at what can you do in order to still engage with the customer if they're high rate, what is the solution and get that procedure sorted, the customer uh, um, satisfaction kind of procedure. I used to measure the KPIs and we still do with my clients. We measure the KPIs on the overall retail achieved. So they kind of a little bonus if we achieve the overall target for retail. We used to do the rebooking rate, uh, the white space, so the minimum white space. So I want you to have 80% uh, fully booked, at least on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you minimize the white space, we can look at a, a little... Um, uh, bonus as well and customer satisfaction I think they're definitely the one that are helping with the testimonials and we need to remember with all of this that's going on talking about nurturing the client nurturing the reception you know focus your receptionists on getting uh, testimonials oh my god that was lovely you know please write us something for us on the on the Instagram or do us a little uh, uh, Facebook uh, uh, review perhaps you even have a little voucher of five pounds for their next treatment uh, if they leave a review something like that just to make sure that we're nurturing once more what's going on in your spa and everyone looks at you and realize or salon and looks at you and realize oh my god that was great and that was amazing so to me they're very important and that's a really important kpi that you could focus on so the diary management i'm checking how for how uh, i'm doing with time uh, not too bad so the diary management we're going to manage your your diary we really the more you manage your planning or your diary i don't know why i called it planning i think i had my french word in there but manage your your diary is increasing your revenue as simple as that and i'm sure you all know that so i'm going to give you a little example here on a, a, a diary so as you can see we have five gaps in between the appointments okay so those five gaps so 15 minutes in this particular diary uh, is 75 minutes altogether that's just for one day i'm going to multiply that by the average pound per hour that will give me my daily loss so just work out or your system might have how much do you generate on an hourly rate as a business you can always take your revenue from last year divided by 52 weeks divided by the days that you open and divided by the hour or divided by the hours that you are open for the week so it give you your how much you're generating per hour so as an example here, the hourly rate is 80 pounds. Uh, I divide that by 60 minutes. That's one pound 33 per minute. 75 minutes that I'm losing here in this diary multiplied by one pound 33. That's a hundred pound loss. I then multiply that by 27 days because I'm closed on Sundays. That's 2,700 pounds for the uh, months. And I multiply that by 12 months for the year. That's 32,400 pounds that I am losing purely because of those gaps. Now, I want my staff to put, my, my receptionist to put every single every single thing that goes on in between. So for example, if we need to send the therapist to go to the bank or she needs to go to the post office, I just want to write it down, block it and write it down, go to the post office. Uh, she's having an extra 15 minutes break, write it down and block it. I don't want to see any gaps. And I used to be so strict with the gaps uh, that uh, the reception team used to phone me and say, Valerie, we've got gaps in a diary, you know, so sorry, but we have managed and manage those gaps because we 
know you're going to have 10 minutes in between your clients. We know that. But make sure you're inputting it in your system within each of the treatments. Because then, you know, if you've got an eyebrow shape at the 10 minutes, that's your treatment. So then it's, there's no gaps in between treatments. You've already got that 10 minutes extra. So yes, you're going to lose money with the 10 minutes extra. However, I'm not necessarily that convinced because if you have worked out your hourly, uh, your budget and you've worked out perhaps your opening hours, you might not lose as much as what you think. But where you do lose is if on top of those 10 minutes that you're giving, you're adding an extra 15 minutes or you're adding an extra five minutes. So you should be looking and the receptionist should be looking a week, if not two weeks in advance, as what's going on within this diary. Very, 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 very important. That's your bread and butter. This is where the money comes in. So here the diary is optimized. We're happy with that. There's 30 minute gaps in between. So I'm fine. I can, I can fill in 30 minutes. Can I fill 15 minutes? It's going to be a lot harder. So really, really be on top of that. You've got to have a cancellation policy. Here, a uh, number of let's say you have one cancellation of uh, per day uh, let's say on an average uh, you're doing 50 pounds per hour uh, that means that's 50 pounds that i'm losing per day again for the if i'm open six days a week that's 300 pounds for the week that i'm losing if i'm uh, you know i'm um, that's sorry that's a thousand two hundred pounds per month that i'm losing because I've, i'm losing 24 appointments per month and per year i'm losing 288 uh, appointments and it's at 14,400. add that plus the gaps Plus, we need to remember with the cancellation uh, that you have, it could be a double whammy because you could have had someone else instead, but you've had to lose that, uh, that uh, uh, client. So I have the solution of green light, rain light, red light, which basically, you know, madam, I'm so sorry you couldn't make it. Of course, we understand, but please bear in mind that we've got a very strict cancellation policy at the moment, uh, and therefore we're going to put it on your note, but next time you will need to uh, unfortunately pay for your appointment so you can have a green light and red light it was one of my clients that used to do that and i thought that was really really clever because you, you it's awkward isn't there when you have to ask for the money but if you for you madam on this occasion yes but that will be the last time and i'm a strong believer in particularly at the moment that you need to have non-refundable deposits that is so so important because it, it, especially when you're opening the doors you don't want to have a, a cancellation a day that is going to cripple you so reception should be dealing with the diary management a lot more now the diary is optimized when you control the demand so when i'm hearing uh, people saying oh i don't want to have lip waxes because it's going to you know 10 minutes plus 10 minutes is going to do a lot for me it's a little bit of a danger zone on this i believe that you know what does the customer hear unless i book 30 minutes i can't come into your, your business and you need to remember you might attract new clients so if, if you've got a new client who want to see how you operate you you know for your lip waxes and you can upsell or, or cross sell other things then surely that makes sense to me to actually still offer it but remember you're in charge of your diary so if you've got one or two lip wax a day it's fine is if the whole diary is just lip waxes then there's a bit of an issue and you need to get all you know in touch with me now you need to have clear guidelines you work on your waiting list work on the waiting list is such an important element of the 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 receptionist um we used to have a, a waiting list and uh, sorry madam you couldn't come in on saturday we would phone them the following day i'm so sorry we were busy yesterday we couldn't get you in however we've got an appointment for next week on saturday you work that waiting list don't just leave it and see you later and not never have a phone call with that client again work on that waiting list uh, we used to have also a last minute appointment list in particular in spas where there's a lot of people working around you like offices or stuff like that you could have a, a last minute appointment so for example uh, um, you create a list we had like 30 to 40 people on that list that would be you know very happy to have a last minute appointment you don't have to, have to make it cheaper it's just they know we're busy so therefore if we've got a last minute would you like to be on the list so we call you if we've got an appointment that was a gold mine that list and as far as i'm concerned the therapy the, the the receptionist should learn the menu and retail prices by heart so whilst you've got time now get to do a quiz make sure you're really on it um, and get them to learn that that menu 
by heart. They know what to upsell. They know what to upsell. When someone phones and you, and when you phone a salon and the receptionist simply reads the menu, I can go online and do that. I don't need your phone to do that. I want you to tell me by, by, you know, it comes from you. It comes something really special. And if you're going to sell me something and you don't know the price, you're instantly losing that sale. The, 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 the decision is so fast as a client to buy something. So you do need to know all the prices and retail prices. So let's look at the phone calls. And I know I'm powering through, I'm powering through. Uh, we need to remember, and uh, those who work with me or have heard me before, I'm obsessed with this book called Drop the Pink Elephant by Bill McFallon. Uh, it's available on Amazon. And uh, I think I should get commission from this guy because I do mention him every time. I love this book because it's all about the communication, in particular for reception. You know, and what he says on there is 55% of the communication is body language and 38% is a tone of voice. So the tone of voice, if you're talking like that and you're answering really like that or you're too loud, you're basically going to give an impression. So the tone of voice is very important. Only 7% of what we say is actually heard. Only 7% is the words. So therefore, if my body language and my tone of voice is not right, then uh, the, the recipient cannot hear what I say properly. So when we hear, when we know that fact, we're going to hold on to that for that receptionist and look into that a little bit more. So with a customer's journey, when it comes to phoning the spa, or the salon. You know, number one is they need to find the number. You will be very surprised as a customer looking at websites. Sometimes it's very difficult to find the phone number. And if I have to click all sorts of things, I lose interest and I'm just gonna go somewhere else. Number two, how many times it rings. That's always the issue, isn't it? You need to know, right, after three tones, you answer the phone or the phone's gonna go on the loop into the manager's office and come back. We really, really have the system that is very, very clear. But how many times do you want the phone to ring? And it's always this chicken and the egg situation, isn't it? Do I answer the client in front of me or do I answer the phone? But I come to the principle that if a client phones you and they don't go online to book, that means somewhere along the line, they have got uh, a question, a query, otherwise they would book online. So we've got to make sure you again have that welcoming element. You know, the impression is from the start, the impression is from the minute that they phone, you know, getting to know me, getting to know the client, getting to know what they want. It's got to be really, really efficient uh, query that is answered properly. And we've got to look at, especially at the moment, at the correct correct booking and data that is going to be very important for trace and track uh, uh, NHS is very very important do double check the data at all time and obviously how do we say goodbye on the phone now the do's of the phone uh, situation if we know that 38 percent is the tone of voice that's why we say when you're on the phone smile it sounds ridiculous but if you smile you actually have a tone of voice that's a lot more warm and friendly Explain with chocolate language. I call it chocolate language. Like, oh my God, I really want this. I want to come here. It's going to be amazing. Explain not just, oh yeah, it's a facial. What is, what, what's about that facial? What does it sound like? What are we doing? You know, how can we reassure the client with all the PPE that's going on? Just go through the menu and make sure your receptionists are really comfortable with explaining what's going on you know, answer the queries, explain the brands. Sometimes we, when we phone, when we do mystery shop uh, on the phone, uh, we hardly hear the brands. You know, we assume that I know the facial and I know the brand, but we're never asking me uh, as a client, oh, are you familiar with this brand? This is what we use. Do you know anything about it? Have you used it before? We'd never hear anything. Explain the menu uh, without reading it. That's definitely been one of my bare, uh, you know, one of my uh, uh, pet hate, I guess. Uh, know that all the therapist's weaknesses and strengths, you can put them, the client after what you found out where they're going to go with who. Uh, know the vision of the spa or the salon. You know, know what, the, what, what ethos we have here. What makes us different? What is the USP? And one thing I used to do, and I really strongly advise it for you right now, in particular when we're going to open, confirm your appointments 48 to 24 hours in advance. But not 
not just by text message and email. How many people do read the email? I never do. I give you my Yahoo email address. And uh, if I do give you that, I mean, I never look at it. You know, if I, and text messages, I personally, I don't like it. I find them intrusive. So I don't want, I, I opt out. And I feel, um, I feel like the client has, when you phone them, they have an element of perhaps you can upsell. Perhaps there's been a cancellation, so you can, oh, we've got a space straight after you. Did you want to uh, make the, uh, take advantage and have a manicure straight after? You know, we can upsell, we can confirm, we can double check the data. Now, there are some clients who are going to be able, uh, telling you, I don't want you to call me. That's fine. Put it on a note and don't call them to confirm the appointments. But that has been, again, really increasing what I call my bread and butter. And don't on the phone, don't be too fast with the explanations, don't create a tension, don't assume the customer knows everything. If they're phoning, they need something, there's something that's bothering them or there's something they can't do themselves. Don't confirm without asking questions. We've got to ask questions. How many times have I, you know, have I done mystery phone uh, calls and I was told, oh, you want a facial? Great, I've got an amazing one for you. How do you know? You've not even asked me what I wanted. Do I sound old? Because you're asking me the anti-aging facial. You know, so we're not really kind of getting to know that client. So don't leave the database loose, in particular at the moment. Don't take things Personally, and that's something where, you know, I used to say to my receptionist, you know, take it, you've got to build a backbone, you know, you've got to take it and you've got to make sure that it's not personal to you. It's just the client might be high rate for something, might be annoyed. It's not a personal attack. So it's being able to shield yourself, isn't it? And physically with all the PPE and also mentally where you're not taking everything uh, too personally. And then don't forget to mention the spa or the salon name because sometimes we phone and we don't even know where we're phoning. And don't ask them to look online when I phone and I get the client, the, the receptionist to tell me, oh, if you go online, there's a menu there. That that is okay. I'm gonna go online and I'm gonna look at every every single one of them that is online as well around you. Don't tell that send them online. One reason is if I phone, I've got a query. Otherwise, I would look online. So really remember that you're here to increase the revenue. You're going to define the key questions, what you want for your team to ask. You're going to have the art of listening. That's also an art that can be taught. And what I used to get my receptionist to do for every queries they had on the phone, have a little pad on the side and write down three key points that they can hear the client wants and answers those three points because otherwise you're going to go into tension everywhere and therefore that's when it becomes a bit of a battle so that was a really strong point just write down the three key uh, uh, kind of issues or or queries that that client has answer the client's needs but of the uh, by confirming the needs so you've just told me you needed a facial and you're looking for something to glow the skin etc Yes, that's what I want. You want the client to say, yes, that's what I want. You know, suggestion by confirming the results. So we've got this amazing facial for you that's going to give you that glow that you're looking for, but also, here we go. So we're confirming that result. Upsell and cross-sell, upsell and cross-sell, and also always talk about the highest price treatment second. So we've got this facial for you for half, for half an hour at £30. However, we have got the super duper for an hour at £65. So always talk about the wow, this is, you know, we've got that, but this one's going to be the best result for you. So uh, these are the questions. You might want to take a little screenshot because I'm realizing I haven't got that long to go because I know I'm talking too much. Uh, and I've still got a few things to tell you. So questions, what treatments do you have? Uh, uh, did you have last? What results are you looking for? You know, what concerns do you have? Never, ever, ever am I asked what concerns do I have? Surely you should be asking me that as a receptionist and as a therapist, you know, really what currently products are you currently using? You know, tell me if you had a magic one what would you want to uh, from your experience here how often do you want to treat yourself how did you hear about us all of this um, uh, really really important so the what the where the who the how the when the why the tell me how do you how do you hear about how did you hear about us tell me what you're looking for to have as a result for your skin so all of that is really, really important and never ever ever 
ever assume that you know the answer until you've really pulled all of these questions from your client. And I always say, and in coaching, it's, right, it's the same as well, that you have five questions, the five whys. When you ask five questions, you're really squeezing the information out. So sometimes we don't have five uh, question, five, the time for five questions, so make it three, and that will be fine. Whew, let's do the goodbye. So they've come in, you've had the fun call, you're really looking at the goodbye. Look at the signature welcoming and goodbye is such an important element. You know, revisit what is your USP, be consistent and never ever forget the loyalty scheme. How many times do we do mystery shop and we hardly give them the loyalty scheme? Or it's just like, did you want a loyalty scheme? I was like, okay, that's really attractive. I don't even know what it is. You know, there's no excitement. There's no chocolate language about it. So we've got to revisit all of that. And in particular right now with what's going on, I've made my clients kind of go through a customer journey, analyze to make sure that we analyze every single step of the customer journey that is happening on the best of time and then we do one for the COVID so everyone is much more relaxed about what's going on but the loyalty scheme has got to be introduced in a much nicer way in a chocolate language way you know we've got the most amazing scheme for you to stay with us and really value your customs so what we'd like to do is this is how it works how does that sound you know we we, we value you I think it's all about valuing and remember, it's all about the details, the consistency. We used to have a communication book in the reception to make sure we kind of write things down between the different shifts or between, because you get so busy at reception, even with what was gonna go on and you won't have any walk-ins, you still have that busyness, isn't it? The phone might be ringing. You might be the one helping and cleaning in between. So communication book was really, really good. And it's a consistency of your journey, whether the client comes in now or in five months time it's always consistent and you know if you have a structure to fall back on that's the best because reception gets really really busy and then it fall flat but if you have nothing to fall back on that's when you'll find that you're getting uh, um, not necessarily the best customer journey or the best increase in revenue but at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, I really want to talk to you about one thing and one thing alone. And if you're going to do one thing and you're going to really focus your team on one thing, I hope you're getting the message, is rebookings, 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 rebookings. Now, I'm being told, oh, no, Valerie, we do rebooking, we do rebooking. That's interesting because when we do mystery shops, we hardly asked for rebooking. I did 62 mystery shop was it 62 yeah, uh, or 69? I can't remember. But in 2018, I got too busy last year. So I sent my trainer to do the mystery shops, right? Out of 62, I got two people rebooking me. That's it. That's it. Because we assume that the client's going to look online. We assume that I is fine. I've asked three people. So we assume a lot. Especially at the moment, you have got a massive, massive focus on look, madam, it's really busy at the moment, obviously, so we need to see you in four weeks' time. We need to see you on six weeks. It's going to be the uh, 15th of August, and it's a Tuesday at two o'clock. How does that sound to you? We need to be a lot stronger. What happens with rebooking is, uh, would you like to rebook? But what is the client going to say, yes or no? So you're not inviting for a proper rebooking. We used to have in the, in the uh, staff room, so rebooking for weekly massages, because that's what it should be, although they probably have it monthly, but we're going to try weekly. We're going to try and book for four weeks for waxing, money and petty. And we would give them, today is the 1st of August, so in four weeks, it will be uh, the 28th of August. That's when you need to book. So the therapist or the receptionist would have the date in their head. You know, today I'm going to try and book for the 28th. I'm doing a money. I'm going to book for the 28th. So next time I'd like to see you on the 28th at two o'clock. How does that sound? really be more specific in your rebookings because your bread and butter, you're going to be busy. I talk to a lot of people on an international level and everybody has been telling me, Valerie, it's like Christmas is quite overwhelming. Everyone's really happy to see us. They 
crying, there's a connection, a reconnection that's happening, which is wonderful. You're going to feel really overwhelmed on an emotional level. It is your time now to build those clients to come back again and again and be stronger. So if I did something on reception right now, I would do a incentive on rebooking for my receptionist. Rebook, rebook, rebook. So your massage was, uh, your, your money was uh, today, in four weeks time is that day at two o'clock how does that sound we need to rebook because that's your bread and butter it doesn't matter if they're going to rebook you rechange it at least you know the money that is coming into your account i, I hope i'm making it uh, quite clear so you can go on my website it's the uh, you can follow me on social media yeah, we do all sorts of online uh, uh, courses. I do coaching and I do also uh, one to one. So, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you and I can't wait for the questions. And I cannot believe I've done it in 32 minutes, Eve. I'm just literally uh, gobsmacked. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Valerie. Thanks for speeding through. <laughs> <laughs> I just know everyone's telling me, Valerie. <laughs> No, we just wanted to make sure we've got plenty of time to get people's questions answered and to chat about the comments we've been having because we've had lots of comments um, Fabulous. Over on Facebook. So thank you. That was really interesting. I think there's so much useful information there. I think um, obviously, as, you, as we were chatting about before we went live, a lot of this is stuff that's just relevant all the time that you should be yes. doing this way. I think that's the thing. It's never been more important, has it, from when we get back to reopening to kind of... I mean, for sure, for sure. And for me, reception has always been like, that's why it's part of the Delphos 5, because without a strong reception, you're actually losing money. And yeah. a good reception team will increase the revenue. You know, they're, they're worth their weight in gold. If you've got a good receptionist, you, they are worth everything. Definitely. So we've got to remember that investment into the reception in terms of training or, or, or support that you have. And it doesn't mean it's you as an owner that needs to do the reception. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that probably has been not at the top of the list for salons, I think, for some years. I think reception is something that people are really starting to pay more attention to now. <laughs> and sure. it. and it's, it's something that does involve investment but it's like it pays off as you say and um, so yeah we've had tons of comments lots of people saying thank you this was amazing it was so helpful and okay. um, we've had quite a few questions around cancellation policy um because a few people always have... a kind of worm that one i just thought do i leave it in there it's like a massive kind of worm every time we talk about cancellation. <laughs> i think it's an issue isn't it for so many people it's a problem everyone struggles with but um the questions have more been around what about people that, that cancel saying that they have COVID symptoms? I mean, obviously, I think we have to be so careful around that on reopening. But also, you know, it's difficult because there is, it does leave it open to certain people to take advantage of the people that are repeat offenders with, with late yeah. cancellations. So what should be people's policy around that if they do get a late cancellation and, and people say they're feeling unwell? I mean, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? It's, it, it? I think there will be people that are going to abuse it, perhaps, if they, you know, oh, God, I can't be bothered, or I'm tired, I don't want to go. And perhaps they're going to, if they know it's part of the policy. So uh, my, my advice has been for my clients that, look, you, if you take a, a, a booking fee, you know, don't refund the booking fee and say, absolutely no problem. What we'll do is we'll move the booking fee for your future appointments. You know, so you keep the booking fee and we'll move it to future appointments. Okay. If you're getting someone really high rate and really upset and really annoyed, again, it's the green light, red light. Listen, on, the, on this occasion, we'll, we'll give it to you. I completely understand. No problem. Don't stress yourself. You know, you'll, you will fill that appointment again. Uh, not a problem. And then we'll put it on the note. So next time is we can't do that again. We can't keep doing it. So I, I really like, it was a client of mine that did that, the green, green light, red light. And I just thought that's, that's a nice way because sometimes it is awkward with a client to say, sorry, you can't, you know, it's, it's, it's just quite awkward. So that for this occasion, no problem. We'll do that. But next time I'm afraid we've got a very strong cancellation policy and strict ones. So sure. no, that makes complete sense. <clears throat> Another question we've had which sort of relates is um, with appointments likely to have to be booked well in advance and no walk-ins, 
how can you fill those gaps? Because I guess people are used to filling last minute gaps or, or being able to kind of advertise those or accept walk-ins to, to fill them. So any well, advice why I was talking about the last minute uh, uh, kind of, it's a bit like your waiting list, uh, but it's a last minute appointment. So anyone, if you've got offices nearby, if you've got businesses association, any kind of schools, mums at school, PTAs, all this thing, get in touch and say, would you want, who's interested to go on this last minute list? And uh, with this last minute list, we will call you if an appointment becomes available. And we had something like 40 people on there and it was a gold mine that list. When someone canceled, we could phone the people in that list. Listen, we've got something in two hours. Would you like the appointment? You know, that for me was a gold mine. Your waiting list is also a gold mine. Maybe someone wanted something on that day. So manage the to do the, the waiting list. Don't just have it sitting there and mm -hmm. doing nothing. Um, and this is why personally, I strongly believe that phoning 48 to 28 to 40, uh, 24 hours in advance will confirm the appointment, not just a text message, not just a, um, that's just not enough. It really is not enough. A phone call makes it all happen. It really does. And, and the, the places where we've implemented it, obviously there's some places you can't because maybe there's not, you know, not enough of you, not enough receptionists, but if you can, 24 hours, we just want you to confirm your appointment because if you've got a gap, you can then listen we've just had a cancellation did you want to make take advantage of your uh, you know doing your nails or your waxing or you can upsell excellent yeah no that's a great way around it isn't it i think if um if it is insisted that all appointments have to be pre-booked then a waiting list is a great alternative to walk in it's fantastic waiting list and then last minute list yeah absolutely another question we've had is without a definite date for reopening at the moment how should we be booking in clients that want to come in do you advise, a, I guess this is where a waiting list comes in, in terms of pre-book? Yeah, I mean, I've been telling my clients, don't book anyone for the fourth. We don't know if it's the fourth. So, you know, we've kind of been playing it very, very cautiously. But what we have been doing is a waiting list again. But I want to know what you want. It's like a wish list instead of waiting list. I don't really like that word, but a wish list. Listen, when would you like your appointment, if you could have it, and what do you want to, to secure for? First come, first serve basis. Sure. So they're building this list, long list of people that they can then contact and then uh, uh, open their, their diary when, the, when we know the date. But for some of you who have a big database, it's quite difficult and daunting and thinking, I'm going to be on the phone literally for five days <laughs> to try and book everybody. So it depends a little bit on your, to, on, you know, on, on your business uh, itself. So some of you, I would suggest you could do a wish list for your top 50 clients or top 100 clients, so your VIP clients, the ones you definitely know, they, they are regular to you, and you could kind of give them preferential uh, treatment, treatments and spaces. Uh, but I like, personally, I like the fact that I would want to know what treatment they're booking for, what treatment they want. You know why? Because I know how much money is coming in over the next three or four weeks or whatever so if your database is too big just focus on your vip you could have a vvip you could have vip and then you could have everyone else and then everyone else could just have a link of the booking uh, uh system once it once you you know the date but you you're looking after your vvip and your vip first yeah and, and actually i've got a client which i thought was really clever uh, she's going to, to to test her customer journey with her VVIP, you know, the ones that, that she trusts and loves. So she said, we're going to do on the on the day that we know we can open, we're going to do the the on that day purely those really big VIPs um, and people we know we love. We you know we lo we've known for a long time, and we're going to help them. Uh, we're going to test the customer journey because it's all about kind of connection again, isn't it? That we haven't worked together for a long time and we need to connect again. Yeah. We need to connect and we need to kind of feel okay about all the PPs and the new customer journey. So I thought that was quite clever, actually. I really Yeah, quite that's an interesting that. idea because obviously you're rewarding your VVIP loyal customers, but also yeah. they're the ones that are going to be most understanding and will give you the feedback that you need probably to, to adjust it. Exactly. But also, you know, having knowing what they want to book for, it's always good for the financial budget side of things. 
Yeah, absolutely. And another question we've had is regarding um, training people up on reception, would you suggest a script for reception, particularly in relation to COVID? So people really are kind of scripted in on what to say to people about what's changed? A hundred percent. Yeah, always. I'm procedure driven. I've got procedures, procedures, procedures for everything. <laughs> we've uh, launched the SOP manual finally. I don't know if you remember seven years ago I was talking to you about the SOP manual we've actually finally launched it and you can create an SOP manual you know after we worked really hard on it um, suddenly we've had the time I think like everyone else uh, but I think having a, a script is a good idea but making sure that the the, the receptionist doesn't sound robotic Mm, absolutely mm. that's the problem about strict you don't want it to be red da, 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 da. it's got to be natural it's got to be you know so it's something that you learn by heart that they're comfortable with they put their little spin on it they're with their little characters the way they are the way they smile and i think one thing that's been coming across for the past few weeks with everything that's going on is actually we're not talking about the customer journey and the bottom line is we need to nurture and really focus on how does the customer feel at the moment you know how can we reassure them so having a script is a brilliant idea because everything has to have a procedure yeah. uh, but making sure that it's not too robotic yeah yeah i think that's the thing i think as long as people know that they can adapt it and, and put their own spin on it that's so important isn't it because there's nothing worse than that kind of going through the motion sort of customer service yeah, a little bit like when we phone and i say you know I, you can hear and you can go on a website and you can hear they're reading the menu that's just pointless i might as well do it myself and it's not the heart in it i want the heart i want to hear it that oh my god that treatment is amazing it's going to make you feel you know that's that's what the customer is that chocolate language I call yeah it. i love that term chocolate language that's really yeah. nice just how excited you get about chocolate <laughs> i know exactly i mean you can call it whatever your uh, poncho is you know for me it's chocolate yeah it's just oh, yeah. to be like oh my god i want this no it's fantastic that no, makes complete sense and um, one other question we've had is about um, managing white space again. How do you advise managing white space if clients are booking online? It's a bit harder, I suppose, than if you are doing it by phone. Oh, nightmare, right? Uh, I mean, when we used to, when I remember when I was at Bliss, uh, we launched, you know, at the time, I'm going to sound really old, but we launched the online booking. Um, and I think uh, overnight, so we used to, we used to, we left uh, to go home. There was, the nail station was empty, you know, the nail columns were empty. We came back the following day. It was literally fully booked. So 40% of our database started booking online and they were booking between the hours of nine o'clock at night and 11 o'clock at night. And that was like, whoa, you know, this is intense. So, you know, again, it's knowing your, your customers. There are customers who don't want to bulge, not happy, leave me alone, don't phone me fine let's write it down on the on the note and there are customers that are happy listen we just need you to come in 10 minutes before is that okay unfortunately online we just you know the the, the um, we wanted you to come 10 minutes because of the appointment system a lot of customers are fine if it's 10 15 minutes they're fine you know so it's again managing your diary but the key to that as well is the more you are managing in advance the more you can prevent those gaps okay you yeah. see what I mean? So you, you can't just do it a day in advance. It's like a week to two weeks in advance. And, you know, we have the receptionist. I had one in particular who looked at the diary and she, it was like Tetris to her. It was like moving things around, boom, boom, boom. Next thing I know, she's got an hour and a half. Like, how did you find that hour and a half, you know, of, of space? So it's really making sure that uh, uh, you're managing at least, at least a week in advance. Double check everything. But if you need to, when you go to the dentist, you know, they, they don't give you, uh, uh, do you want the morning or afternoon? They give you, we've got 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock. They're very specific. So you don't give too much of a choice. you in charge of your diary. Yeah. The online is just simply a call. And if someone doesn't want to move, all I wanted with my gaps, I'm going to sound like a, but I was obsessed, but you can imagine, um, you know, how much money you're losing. Uh, I was really, really obsessed. But as long as I know that you've made, you've made everything possible so there is no gap, then I'm fine. Yeah. Perhaps if I can see that there's a, a, a day where it's particularly gappy, then I do an incentive with a therapist on upselling and cross-selling. Excellent. We've actually had a question pop up related to this as we're speaking, which was, um, I want to introduce a centralised booking 
system for my three salons, do you think it would work having that um, online between certain hours and use that to kind of pick up the other? So basically use the online booking to pick up times that aren't booked through the central booking line. Um, trying to understand the question, hold on a minute. So, so the centralized booking systems are brilliant. They're really, really good. Uh, so would it be one person dealing with the whole diary for the three location? Yeah, I think so. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm guessing from the question. So a centralized phone line to book for three salons, but online booking to be able to book the slots that aren't booked. Online. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, definitely the way forward. If you can find the system. Mm. But you might want to get in touch with me so I can understand a little bit bit more actually uh, just you can book a, a consultation so I can understand and see what you can do but centralized is definitely a lot a lot a lot better um, uh, if you've got more than you know two salons definitely mm -hmm. and there are some brilliant systems out there um, yeah fantastic and um, the other another question we've had is about um, how do we need to change booking to factor in the extra time between clients for cleaning and preparing the room more thoroughly? So I guess things are going to need to change, obviously, um, on reopening. So is this going to impact the way that people should book? Um, book so most of the system will allow you to have, so if you have, let's say, a, a, an hour, just for the sake of it, a facial for an hour, 60 minutes, you're just going to add that, that, that 10 minutes extra so you, you're, when you're booking, that's the booking. It includes that 10 minutes. So it's going to be uh, 80 minutes for that facial. Yeah? And this is what I mean, that if you have that 10 minutes and on top of that, you've got a gap of 10 minutes or 15 minutes, that's when you lose money. That's what I don't want to see. If the 10 minutes are included in every treatment that you do and you book like that, then that's fine. There's no reason why there should be a, a gap on top of it in between. You know, um, because otherwise, you know, and please don't tell me I'm going to sell more because that doesn't happen. So <laughs> that just needs to be part of the customer journey, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the retail. So, you know, as long as you you inputting it in your system, speak to your system providers, but you should be able to put it include, included in all the treatments. Um, so, so it's a lot easier to see and you can cannot see gaps in between. Excellent. I hope that answered yeah, I think so. I think it's just, it's true. It's going to be more important than ever to manage the diary so that because we're going to have longer turnaround times, because probably fewer yeah. people may be allowed to read but, but again, it depends yeah. on the customer journey again. And, and this is why I never thought it was a one size fit all uh, in terms of coaching, etc. because everyone's got their own customer journey. Is the reception able to help further? I've got a client who basically the reception, the, the therapists are going to do the whole journey in the room, including payment in the rooms with their own iPad and their, their IZ tool and everything else. So everything is done one and they just need to go. So in terms of the reception, the reception is going to work from home and do all of the diary uh, management. So it, it all depends on your customer journey. And that's why you need to analyze that to make sure that you, you really have an efficiency of the diary management as well as, you know, what's going on in your, in your salon. Absolutely. And that's where it all comes back to well-managed reception. But Valerie, um, we're just about out of time today, but we've got oh. more questions popping up over on Facebook. So we'll try and kind of have a look at those afterwards. We just start uh, running I will, answer, I will answer afterwards. Uh, I will go on Facebook. I will answer the questions. But as I said, you can book in with me for consultation. Just go on my uh, website, thedelfoshgroup.co.uk, and we can have a little chat if you are a little bit worried on a certain aspects of your customer journey. Uh, I can answer that for you. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much, Valerie. We've had, as well as questions, we've had loads of comments saying this was so helpful, really, really good. Listening to the client and their needs, paying attention, so important. Uh, I think we're forgetting at the moment. We, I'm not hearing talks about nurturing and that word yeah. coming to me. We need to nurture staff, clients, and our good receptionists who are going to see all sorts. So it's really important. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you, Valerie, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, we've got more webinars lined up this week, so if you've not had a look, have a look over on professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash webinars and, and sign up for this week and next week. And we'll see you again soon. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye.